So from here, let's find the lines of symmetry. So I believe if you start, say, here, and fold over that line, those will be the same. And we can continue doing that from every corner to every point. So I continue doing this. There's going to be quite a few of these. And I think I got them all. And then you would count those and that's how many lines of symmetry you have. Now for degrees of rotation, if I started with the point right here, notice this is a symmetrical object, so I would say it would go from here to here, and then here, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have. So if I were to go from here all the way around, I would say this has order nine. And the reason why it's nine is because it goes from here to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or you could count the number of edges, which there's nine. And then to find the degree of rotation, you take 360 divided by nine, which ends up being 40 degrees. So every 40 degrees, it rotates. So does this shape have rotational symmetry? So we need to look and see, are their arms at the same angle? And this is called synchronized swimming. And I see that this person's arm is a little bit off, but let's just go with it and say this person had their arm out the right direction. So what's the degree of rotation? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. So I would just take 360 divided by eight, Yes, 360 divided by 8, and I get 45 degrees. So the degree of rotation is 45 degrees. Every time you turn this 45 degrees, you get the person on top of the person. Write a rule for the translation. Okay, so I have to look, am I going from here to there? Or am I going from the dotted to the solid? And the way I know is if there's a, an image, that means that's, that's your image. And this is where you start because it doesn't have the little hash mark on it. And so I need to write me a rule. And so I could say mathematically, take every point and do this. You're going to take the A and you're going to move it over one, two, three, four, five and then up three. So I, I would say you take your X, move it to the left five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to go up three. One, two, three. So that's how I would say, notice this is an arrow. It doesn't look like an arrow. So take every point, move it to the left five, up three. Left five, Find the image of the points A and B after reflection over the line Y equals negative X. I'm going to write down the rule, and the rule says if you go Y equals negative X, this is what you do. You switch the X and the Y, and you negate them. That is the rule for Y equals negative X. So if I was going to do A, I swap negative 2 and 3, and then I negate them. Negate just means change the sign. So that's going to be positive, that's going to be negative. 
an F or B, I just switch the negative 7 and the negative 3. Negate them means change the sign. So I'm going to change that to positive and that to positive. So I already got my answer. My image of A is 2, negative 3. And then my image of B is 3, 7. On this problem, we're going from the black image to the blue image. And so I'll start off with just K. K goes from here to here. And it looks like all they did was turn it around the origin. So that'd be called a rotation. And it looks like they moved one quadrant. So I would say rotation of 90 degrees. And then going this way, we call that clockwise. Yeah, I'm just going to verify that. The point K is negative 1, 1, 2, 3. And K prime, if I'm rotating, remember those switch signs, or they switch places. And because I went to this quadrant where everything's positive, everything's positive. So let me see if K prime is 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1. So I feel pretty confident about my answer. Next, what is the image of the points after a 90 degree rotation um, about the origin? And they need to tell us which direction. So let's just assume that this was clockwise. So let's assume they mean 90 degree clockwise because that, that is important to know. And so when I'm doing rotations, I personally think for me anyway, to draw a rough sketch. So there's my Y, there's my X, and I this is how I do them. So I think, okay, 3, 5 would be somewhere over there. And so if it's going 90 degrees clockwise, it's going to end up over here somewhere. And I remember that over there, everything is positive negative. And notice this is a rough sketch. Obviously it's not going to be in that exact spot. But if you start here and go 90 degrees clockwise, it ends up over there. Okay. So A would be you swap the 5 and the 3 for 90 degrees. And then you keep in mind that the first number should be positive, second number negative. So that would be 5, negative 3. Point B is negative 1, negative 4. So it would be over here somewhere. And I'm going to go 90 degrees clockwise. It's going to end up over here somewhere. And in that area, that is x's are negative, y's are positive. So I take, when I do 90 degrees, you swap the values. So I'd get b and you swap the 4 and the 1 and then you remember that in this area it's negative positive so that would be negative 4. So describe the transformation that maps the pre-image onto the image. At first glance it looks like a rotation but it's not a rotation because then this part JT would be over here it's in the wrong spot so remember, if you rotate, it gets it moves into the other quadrant. So JT stays in the same quadrant. So then we looked at it a little bit more, and we said, well, what if we reflected it over this diagonal? And remember that diagonal is y equals negative x. So I'm going to put it's a reflection over y equals negative x. Okay. That would be the reflection. How do you write a rule for the translation? Go four units left, five units up. You say, well, you take your point, arrow, and you move it four units to the left, and you move it five units up. All right, so Alex was trying to rotate this four-sided figure 
270 degrees and we added the word clockwise and actually I meant to say counterclockwise so Alex is going counterclockwise so it'll be 90 180 270 so he wanted it to end up over here now, what mistake is obvious that a mistake was made well, that's pretty easy the shape don't even look the same so what makes it obvious that there's a mistake there is obviously a mistake because the figure has changed size and then they ask us go ahead and uh, do the rotation uh, correctly okay so if I take these and I see that A and I'm going 270 degrees that would be the same thing as 90 degrees that way so this shape is going to end up over here and so if I start at B that's 1, 2, 3, 4 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so negative 4, negative 7 if it ends up over here would be 7, 4 4, 5, 6, 7 1, 2, 3, 4 So he was right for B. He was good there. Now D is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 6, 4. Swap the 6 and the 4, you get 4, 6. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's where D would go. Looks like he messed up on D. And then C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it would be 9, 4. Swap it to 4, 9. And everything's positive. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So he was correct on C. And then finally, um, looks like A. I need to check that. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Swap seven and seven, you still get seven and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So everything was good except his D was off. So the D should have been right there. So he was so close. So here's what it should have looked like. Pardon the interruption at this time. We will dismiss all unnumbered classrooms to.